Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. Someone once owned my brain. I never owned it. Everybody had it. It was my dad's fault. It was the kids that called me nigger fault. My mom wasn't home fault. My soon to be stepdad's fault. The little kids that got ran over by the bus fault. My life was, everybody had a piece of my fucking brain. Yep. And through this journey of suffering, Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. When that happens to you, you're all fucked up. Your goals, your ambitions, everything is out the fucking window. In life, we all go through different things. Sometimes your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Guess what? Get the fuck over it. They no longer want you. Maybe you fail a test in school. You worked your ass off. Guess what? You failed the fucking test. Get over it. Move past it. Learn to not let life hijack your brain. At work, you've been working your ass off for that new promotion. You don't fucking get it. Someone else does. Maybe they kiss better ass than you do. Guess what? Get over it. Life will hijack your mind if you let it. Don't allow all these things to make you a lesser person. You must own your mind. Don't let life own yours. Get after it. Stay hard. You don't gain confidence by going to the spot that makes you feel good. It's going to be a false reality. And the second life gives you that challenge, all you want to do is go back to what made you confidence or, 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 or what gave you confidence is that happy spot. No, what gives you confidence, what gave me confidence was spending years at a kitchen table trying to learn how to read and write on my own, realizing I can't learn the way you learn. Mm. I can't, but I can learn. What gives you confidence, not being afraid is overcoming the fear. I used to stutter severely bad. So right now, I don't know how many people are going to watch this. Mm -hmm. You know what gives me confidence? Is knowing I no longer care if I sit and start stuttering to you. That's what gives me confidence is facing these things, overcoming them. And maybe not overcoming them every day, but facing them and facing them and facing them. Pretty soon like this, you know what, man? This is where it's at. Mm -hmm. It's not in that comfort zone. It's in the discomfort zone is where my confidence is getting built. Mm -hmm. That's where it's getting built. But people want to, and they want an easier answer. Yeah. There has to be an easier way. There's not. I coach a lot of people nowadays, billionaires, who call me on the phone and say, man, I'm still missing something. It's because they did what they were good at. And they had this beautiful family, two, three houses, cars, everything. Has everything in the world. On the outside looking in, like, my God, man, how can you be unhappy? I walk around with a backpack with all my stuff in it. And I walk around, happiest person in the world. Have nothing. Happy as hell. It's because I found out the whole key to life. It's not in all that. You have to face yourself. So many people live to be 100 years old and they die miserable having everything because they never examined. And the only way you can set the example is you have to always be willing to work. I don't follow people who talk about what they used to do in life. I don't give a fuck what you used to do. I don't care that, you know, you used to be the bass mother. I don't care. What are you doing today? You may not be that person now, but what are you still doing to try to excel in life? And a lot of people now are talking. I hear so much talk. I don't hear a lot of work. I hear a lot of people telling you what you should be doing, how you should be doing uh -huh. it, how you should be fucking living. And I look at them and you're fat, you're out of shape, you look like shit, but you're telling a motherfucker how to live. No, man, I won't listen to you. There's so many people speaking this shit, and that's what bothered me a lot in the military. There's a lot of people talking shit. I don't see the real suffering behind it, behind what you're saying. I became this 297 pound person because it became my body armor. Because the inside was a fragile, Burton. weak, insecure kid. So I put this big man around it. So when people looked at me, I intimidated them. I scared them. But if they knew the real me, just a little punk. I was a little punk kid in 24-year-old guy's body. So I knew that. No one else did. So um, I tried to change my life and it started there. I went to the recruiter's office. I went there, bad day at work. The bad day at work made me realize so I got to make a stand. How did you lose the weight in three months? <laughs> you just run your ass off? Or? I couldn't run. The okay. first thing about it was, so I said to myself, I'm going to run four miles. My first run out the gate, I'm going to run four miles. 
I ran a mile, I, I ran a quarter of a mile, walked home, sat on the couch depressed. I said, man, there's no way I can do this. But what, what I realized though, is I wasn't gonna give up. Cause I'd already given up many times. And I thought about how would I feel at 50 years old if I gave up now? I mean, not to have, you know, so I kept all this stuff in my mind. And um, basically I started becoming obsessed. Over a period of time, I started becoming obsessed with studying, with weight, with being somebody, with making people who thought it was gonna be nothing kind of like feel like shit. Mm -hmm. I became obsessed with, you have to make this right. Yeah. And the only person could do is yourself. So I became obsessed with just being obsessed. Someone once owned my brain. I never owned it. Everybody had it. It was my dad's fault. It was the kids that called me nigger fault. My mom wasn't home fault. My soon to be stepdad's fault. The little kid that got me over by the bus fault. My life was, everybody had a piece of my fucking brain. Yep. And through this journey of suffering, and the suffering I put it in, because in, I started finding myself. Yeah. And I started, oh no, I'm taking this fucking back from me. This part of my brain is mine now. And I started puzzling back this piece of my brain. And through that, I grew confidence. Um, growing up, being the kid I was, I found strength in different movies. Yeah. So I come home, in one movie I found a lot of strength, and as funny as it may seem, but I visualized this scene. I do it today during the pull-up record. I did 4,030 pull-ups. Yeah. The last time I did it, I actually got it. it. Took me three times. I played one song for 17 hours, pretty much. And it's from this movie, Rocky One, mm -hmm. Round 14. I related to the person in the movie, but just the one scene when Apollo's beating the shit out of Rocky. He falls in the corner, and everybody and Rocky and, and Apollo turns around, arms up, happy as shit. I just, I got this guy. He turns around, not knowing that Rocky's trying to get up off the, off the canvas. Right. Mickey's saying, Mickey's his trainer Saints. saying, stay down. Right. Everybody's saying, you, you, you did good. You did good. You went 14 rounds with, with, with the champ. Rocky didn't hear shit. He got up. And what sticks in my mind today, still, and I'm seeing it right now, when he got up, Apollo starts to turn around to see the aftermath of what the fuck he just destroyed. And he did not expect to see what he saw. And what I see out of the whole movie, I see Apollo Creed's face. And I said to myself as a young kid, I want to be that. I don't need to win. I don't need trophies. I don't need people to fucking like me. I just want what he has. A fictional character, whatever the hell it was, I want that. And I visualized that. And I want to become the guy who can get off the canvas and look at somebody who beat the fucking shit out of him. Life. Yeah. I'm talking about life right now. Yeah. Even life itself puts their head down toward Says, David Goggins. Shit. Yeah. This motherfucker is not going to stop. Right. So that mentality became what I wanted. And that's how it started with that visualization of the canvas. And all I got to do is just keep getting up. When you have everything so nice in life, it's, it's great to have a great life. But what happens is you don't self-examine. You don't do a live autopsy. When you have a fucked up life, it almost forces you to do a live autopsy. It forces you to find strength from places that no one looks from. Because food is not at the ready. You know, you're me, I have a learning disability. It's not at the ready. I can't just pick up a book and start reading. Right, right. There's, there's preparation behind everything I fucking do. There's, there's, everything I do has to come with so much fucking preparation. It's, despicable it makes me sick my own personal life makes me sick that's why I'm so disciplined now without my self-discipline there is no David Goggins like I can't like stop reading I won't be able to read tomorrow it will I will lose it that fast you know I you know I cannot stop going to the gym my mind is set up in a spot where hey the second I stop it wants to stop because I had a quitting mind growing up when you get beat the shit out of you all the time, your mind wants to go to that nice spot where you're comforted, where you're not trying, where shit is easy. That's where your mind, it doesn't want to think. You have all these things in the mind and, and the mind can only absorb so much shit. So all the pain that has to go through, it, doesn't, it wants to push it away and say, let's not do that. So every day I'm fighting where the mind wants to go. 
So it's a it's a it's a constant it's a constant evolution, man. I'm, I've never arrived. Every, I'm, I'm trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm like, oh man, I went through Navy SEAL training being fucked up. I ran over 7,000 miles in 2007 being fucked up. I did pull-up records being fucked up. Now that the mind is so fucking strong, let the body catch the mind. So that's now where I'm at. So I'm always trying to reinvent the wheel and see what I'm capable of next. I believe in life you must earn the right to be called a man. And a lot of people do not think the way I do, and that's fine. I'm not asking to be David Goggins. Trust me, it's a hard fucking road to hoe. It's not <laughs> fun. Like it. It's not fun all the time. But the thing about it is, you have to look. I, I looked at my hardships as challenges. Once I got over the pity party, because I went through that phase. Of course. I'm a normal human being. But I realized that that got me exactly where I was at, even worse. As I looked at those challenges the way most people do, woe is me. Why the fuck can't I get a break? Why, I wish I was better. I wish my parents were better. I wish I had a better education. I wish this, I wish that. They have all these wish sandwiches. I started realizing, how can I fucking figure out how this shit can fucking work for me? So the one thing we don't do is we don't, when we're in that dark place, that dark place is a great learning environment. If you can sit back in a dark place and find quiet to just think, there's so much power in your failures, in your fucking, in, in your suffering. Because why? You're still alive. Mm -hmm. You're still fucking here. So you gotta look at that shit as, my God, man, this is power, man. Like, now I gotta flip this shit. How many men will be able to do what I'm about to do, what I'm about to try to do? Like, literally, what gave me strength was when I was at the worst of my worst, how many men would even fucking say they want to try to be a Navy SEAL right now? Yeah, very few, if any. I'm at the worst spot of my life. Like, I can't even walk down the street, let alone run down the street. And I'm gonna now call a recruiter up and try to be a SEAL. There's a lot of power in that. But people don't see it that way. They see it, man, that's stupid. I genuinely believed I could do it. And the reason why, because I had this voice in the back of my head that I kept on running from. I was afraid of the water. I was afraid of dealing with things that made me feel unaccepted. I didn't accept myself. So I kept on going towards things that I felt good. Let me, let me go this way, but something kept on saying, motherfucker, you, you have it, man. You got it, man, but you're gonna have to fail a lot. But you have it. And like I said, that, that voice kept on haunting me, but that voice kept on saying, if you face it, you realize it's not that bad. What, what, what do you think that voice is? I, mean, I, I always, to me, it's God. Yeah, I know you've talked about that a little to bit. To me, it's yeah. God. And um, I don't get off on the whole spiritual tangent. You know, I, I, I don't push that on anybody. I don't care what you believe in. But if you think you're the only motherfucker out here, just, just chilling out and there's nothing, I, and I don't know what God is. I, no one does. I, I, I don't know anything about it, but I know there's something that is above David Goggins. There's, there's too much energy in this world. There's, there's too much, trust me, I've experienced it, man. There's too much energy, and, and people call it God, you call it what you want. There's something out there that if you can tap into more than yourself, that, that there's something out there that, that, that truly exists, that if, if, if you're able just to let yourself go there, it truly exists, and that voice has been in my head, and whatever it is, it's been there, and I didn't want to listen to it, because listening to it was painful, because it drove me to my fears. It drove me to my insecurities. It drove me to my lies. It drove me to the spot that made me feel self-doubt. And I didn't want to go there. It drove me, it, like, hey, over here in this pile of shit where everything is at, you're going to find the true meaning of your life. But I'm like, over there is all the bad shit. I don't want to go over there. I don't want to go like, like, like my dad's over there, the people that didn't like me over there. I'm over there. All that shit is over there. But once you go over there and start to re-examine that shit and start to master what you're afraid of, it's unbelievable, man. Like, I wish to God, the only way I can really describe it is if I can get my brain and put it in someone's head and say, all right, motherfucker, just shut the fuck up and just here. I can't explain it well enough, but here, I'm not super fucking man. Just, this, look, this is what happens. Because basically, what's over there is victory. 
It's all fucking victory. But you have to have the balls and the fucking courage, man. And that's the hard part. There's no science behind this shit. There's no fucking practice. Literally, you have to have the balls to go in your own life, in your own shit. And once you go in there and you're able to face and able to talk about it, you're now in the even playing field with everybody in the world. I don't give a fuck where you come from, how much money your parents have, how much money you didn't have. If you're able to handle yourself, know what you're about, know what you're made of, know how fucked up you are, you are now on an even playing field with the world. So once I did that, all these people who have more money than me, where they came from, had great parents, and they're like, oh my God, I caught all you motherfuckers that quick. Because all the money, all the surface things go away. Because we all are human beings. Right. That money and shit, all that material shit, doesn't matter. It's what's deep inside of the core of your soul that fucking matters. And that's what I realized, man. I, I, I leveled the playing field out. But I had to go over there and face that shit first. And I'm not, I'm not one to kiss my own ass because obviously I tell myself how fucked up I am. But I'm also believing you have to give yourself credit when credit's due. And I became that fucking movie and then some. Like, if you look at the Rocky movie, and I look at it now, and it's still inspirational, that, that scene brings back those, those moments. Uh, I saw a Rocky trained in the movie. But I see what I went through in real life. That, that movie's a fraction. That all those movies I watched that inspired me, they're all fractions of the real work I put into my life. And I don't ever talk about it enough. The amount of work I put into being who I am, I don't have enough time in the fucking day. Like, I don't talk about it. I don't, I don't brag about it. it. No one even knows about it. Like, 99.9% .9 of the shit I did to get to where I'm at today was alone, mm. alone, out there running in cold, in heat, suffering, in pools, trying to swim, at home in a fucking room by myself, trying to teach myself how to read and write, how to study. You know, no one saw that shit. There was no video camera, there was no podcast, there was no Who's David Goggins. Right. What that fucking No, no documentary. There was no docu-fucking-mary that <laughs> shit. It was me, I just, just for me trying to get in the military, which everybody can do. It's easy. Just trying to learn how to read and write was something that blows Rocky away. So all these different challenges that I've been through in my life, I, I've, I've easily, you know, I don't, I don't look at that movie the same way because I'm, I, I'm, I'm proud of what I created, but I'm more proud of I created it without an audience, without a cheering squad, without someone like, you know, like you run the Boston Marathon and people love that race. They run so fast because for 26.2 miles, there's a motherfucking this. Come on, man. You got it. You can do it. You know who you are when there's no motherfucker out there when you're running. And you're at mile 75, 150 mile race. Ain't nobody cheering for you. You're broken. You're fucking defeated. It's you and you alone in your fucking head. And I stayed that way for the better part of 30 fucking years trying to figure this shit out and once you figure it out you look at your everybody say, hey so you're all broken now you know is that how you want to be yep yep if you can feel if i could put my brain in your fucking head you said the same fucking thing you would no longer think i was fucking crazy you no longer think i was sadistic you realize motherfucker this guy found it he found it. We're all looking for this feeling. We're all looking for this feeling. And people look at me because I don't always smile and I'm not always jovial. Sure. <clears throat> nah, man. Don't get it twisted, dude. People see, oh my God, look in his eyes. You see like almost an emptiness. So many people who are judging us don't understand. They, they don't want to look in the eyes of me. They don't want to look in the eyes and study them. What you see in me is fucking real life. That's why people, a lot of people resonate with me because I skip through all the fluff. I skipped through all the fluff. Fuck that. I can't fluff shit. I can't. Why? I don't know what that is. Life didn't present me with fluff. So I'm expressing to you what I know a lot of us are going through. A lot of us are going through fucking hell. Maybe not as bad as me. Maybe worse than me. But they don't know how to express it because we're supposed to live in a fucking world 
where we have to talk a certain way. We have to walk a certain way. We have to act a certain way. A kinder, gentler world. Nothing gets handled in that fucking world. You stay fucked up in that world. You stay in a world of things will get better because someone said they would and I need to find peace. No, you need to go to fucking war with yourself, man. At the end of that fucking war, you'll sit back all damaged and bruised and scarred up and fucked up and maybe your soul has muscles so tight that you may lose two inches on your fucking body. Who knows? But then that fucking war, you're gonna sit back on the couch, maybe have a fucking glass of water. If you drink a beer, you drink a beer. The war may be 30 fucking years, but when it ends, you will know what the fuck it's all about then. And then you'll find your fucking peace.